Tommy Serber, Ricky Esri, Susan Worf, you're on still, correct? Yes, I'm here. Don Holbert, Dwight King is here. Dwight, are you still there? Yes. Um, Commissioner Hatcher's on and Dr. Cross is on. Britton Dotson, are you, are you on yet? Yes. Thank you, Britton. Um, Mr. Hightower, you're you're still there, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Who else is on the call that I uh, that I have not called their name? I'd like to get a record of who's on the call. Heidi McIntyre Wilkinson, Tennessee Department of Agriculture, Land and Water Stewardship Section. I also just wanted to let everyone know briefly that this meeting will be recorded and the recording has started. Hey, John, this is Sam Marshall. I also just uh, jumped on the line here as well. Okay. All right, I just got a message from Tommy Serber that he's going to try to call in in about five minutes. Um, uh, we can, um, we have a quorum in place, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, between the appointed members and the ex officio members. We do have six of the 10 members uh, on the call, so we do have a quorum. And, uh, and Tommy can announce himself when he comes on the call. Uh, Heidi, if you would, if you see others join, if you'd stop me and, and we, we can just make a record of who's on the call um, that we have not, um, as of yet, uh, announced being on the call, that would be helpful. Let me, uh, Heidi's already let everybody know that this meeting is being recorded. All votes today will be by roll call and um, vote. And if you would please identify yourself before you begin speaking, um, that will help us for the recording. All right. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, John. Hey, Rick. Hey, how y'all doing? doing? Doing fine. Thanks. Yeah. So we were, uh, we were uh, just beginning the meeting, Ricky, to say that the meeting is being recorded and that if you uh, wish to speak, please identify yourself for the record uh, since we're doing this virtually. Um, Mr. Chairman, we also need today, before we begin, to take up a motion uh, to conduct this meeting virtually pursuant to the governor's executive orders and the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so if, if some, if one of the members would like to make that, put that in the form of a motion, get a second and a roll call vote, we can continue. Okay. Sounds good, John. So y'all heard John, uh, this is a uh, panel and, uh, good to have everybody on this morning and, and we got a quorum president and we appreciate everybody taking their time to come on and, and, uh, and since we're doing it virtually, we've got to have a a motion to uh, hold this meeting virtually and then we'll go through and do a roll call to make sure it's good with everybody so i'll open the open it up for a motion to do it virtually first of all and state your name before you when you make the motion this is susan war if i move that we have the meeting virtually okay thank you susan is there a second tim cross a second thank you sir Okay, I guess we do the roll call now, John. So I will vote yes. yes. Okay. Uh, Dwight King. Uh, Dwight King. Yes. Dwight uh, King. Tommy, yes. are you? Thank you, Tommy. Dwight. Tommy. Is uh, Tommy? Are you on yet? No. Okay, Susan Ward. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Hatcher. Yes. Doctor Cross. Yes. Uh, Ricky Esper. Yes. Uh, Britton Dodson. Yes. Okay. Uh, did I miss anybody, John? No. Yep. Unanimous. Okay. I think everybody's in favor of doing it virtually. So, uh, since we're all legal on that, I will up, I'll call the meeting to order. And, uh, and like I stated, we got a quorum present that will be recorded. And uh, I think the first 
now, John, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the first thing we need to do is approve the minutes from the last meeting, <clears throat> which was uh, That's December correct. the 11th. Is that right? That okay. is correct. That is correct. And I'm hoping everybody's got a copy of the minutes, either on their uh, email or hard copy that was mailed out. I got a hard copy. Oh, how you doing, Tommy? I'm fine. Thank you. I apologize. Oh, that's fine. We're just getting started. We just uh, we just uh, approved doing it virtually, so we're just now actually uh, going into the minutes from the last meeting that we did virtually in December. So, uh, it, uh, basically, we're opening it up for a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting, uh, unless there are corrections or changes to those. And I, I need a motion to approve them if uh, that's what y'all would like to do. Dwight King, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes. All right, thanks Dwight. Is there a second? I'll second. Is that Tommy? Yes. Okay, thanks Tommy. And then uh, we'll do a roll call to make sure everybody's uh, in favor of approving the minutes as upheld out. So I vote yes. Alan Hill votes yes. Dwight King. Yes. Uh, Tommy Serber. Yes. Susan Ward. Yes. Commissioner Hatcher. Yes. Dr. Cross. Yes. Uh, Britton Dotson. Yes. And Ricky Esri. Yes. Okay, John, I think it's unanimous. Everybody would like to approve the minutes uh, virtually from the last meeting. So we can put that in the record. And then uh, I suppose everybody's got an agenda that we're going to follow, but we're going to actually uh, move some things around just a little bit because we have, uh, I think today is the National Ag Day and we're we got people on there that don't have to be off in a few minutes. So officially, the main reason we're having this meeting today is to approve the new uh, board members from each county, the appointments that have been sent in. And uh, everybody, I hope, has got a list of those appointments uh, from the counties that are doing appointments this year. Uh, I got an email last night and printed off all the ones. So, John, do we need to go over those names, or does everybody have a have a list of those names, so the appointments we, that have been sent in? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think it would be, um, uh, since the email went out late, I, I'm happy to answer any questions anybody may have. I'm happy to read down the list of names that were sent in as the uh, recommended appointments as we normally have. I know some of you have the list in front of you. And some may not have been able to access that, and and I apologize for that. But I can um, I can share my screen here, and we can see them. If you're but if you're calling in, you won't be able to see that. But um, you know, just whatever the pleasure of the group is, we can go through these names. Hey, John, this is Britton Dodson. Uh, Hi, Britton. I noticed I noticed that Sumner and Tipton had not reported their. Uh, candidates right as of, as of yesterday what's the process by which those supervisors would uh, be affirmed um, normally the the state committee will when they vote the motion that's made to approve the appointments includes uh, a statement that allows uh, the department staff me and our staff here to make those late appointments in the same manner as these that are on the list are made so okay thank you that, yeah you're welcome Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up, Mr. Johnson, because we typically uh, include that in our motion when we get to that point. So that's, a, that's good that you brought that up. Uh, is there anybody on, on this morning that, that doesn't have a copy of the names that would like to like for somebody to read all these names? So are we good with proceeding as, as, as everybody has it? Mm 
Yeah, this is Charlie Hatcher. If you can read them off, if it's not too long a list, that'd be good. Yeah, happy to do that. Okay. Happy to do that. Um, uh, I'll read. I'll read the. Uh, here, here we go. I'll be happy to read them. Anderson County. The nominees are, and, and the, this is in numeric order. I'll read them uh, one, two. So Anderson County, Michelle Hofer and Amanda Evans. Bedford County, Samuel Coates and Hayes Clanton. Blunt County, Billy Conning, Terry Blue. Bradley County, John Moore, John Heifner, Ron Calfee. Cannon County, Mark Barker, Alan Pack. Carroll County, Tommy Serber, Kim Renfro. Carter County, Jamie Hughes and Thomas Norris. Cheatham County, Edwin Hogan, Freddie Pritchett and Max Hunt. Claiborne County, Gary Harmon and Chad Shields. Clay County, George Melton and Carla Rich. Cock County, Johnny Sue Phillips and Eva Gooden. Coffee County, Ray Weaver and Anita Goodman. Crockett County, Terry Smith and Kevin Earnhardt. Cumberland County, Jeff Dodson, Lisa Smith. Davidson County, Bob Strasser and Morris Clendenin. Decatur County, Brad Evans, Jason Johnson. DeKalb County, Jen Rose Davis, Richard Close. Dixon County, Cole Reagan, Kenny Gibbs. Dyer County, Jimmy Hester, William Schultz. Fayette County, Bill Higgs and Eugene McFerrin. Fentress County, Jim Bledsoe and Melinda Delk. Gibson County, John Douglas Davis and Jerry Hill. Giles County, Chris Edgman, Brownie Gatlin, Chris Griffin, Jason Birdsong. Grundy County, Charles White, Bobby Grimes. Hancock County, J. Allen Parkey, Jack B. Trent. Hardeman County, Justin Smith and Bradley Denton. Hardin County, Ricky Esri. Hawkins County, Benny Davis, Elizabeth Price. Haywood County, Robert Thornton and Taylor Butterworth and Ray Bradford, Henderson County, Sammy Pruitt and Alex Youngerman, Humphreys County, David Hatcher and Lee Rushton, Jackson County, Philip Brown, Dana Dayton, Jefferson County, Brian Morgan, Josh Longmire, Wayne Johnson, Knox County, Calvin Thompson, Kim Henry Holden, Kathy Martin, Lake County, Ed Samara and Joseph Samara, Lauderdale County, Larry McCoy, Cleve Crook, Carolyn Smith, Lawrence County, Larry McNally, McAnally. Lewis County, Jacob Troll, Shane Maxwell. Loudoun County, Joe Alexander, Jack Bowden, Ricky, Becky Richardson. Macon County, Spencer Shrum, Jason Hessen. Madison County, Don Johnson and Brad Denton. Marshall County, Jason Gillespie and David Hunter. McNary, David Sparks, James Harris. Meigs County, Jeff Thompson, Clyde Jolly, Monroe, Bob Dockery, and Tim Sewell. Montgomery, Paul McKinney, and Al Slate. O'Brien County, Mike Holman, Kenneth Wright. Perry, Mike Southall, Robert Tucker. Pickett, Doug Elder, Rita Crouch, Brian Elder. Polk County, Sheena Hare, Leslie Nicholson, Chris Weaver. Putnam County, Sam Taze, and Rusky, Rusty Chilcutt. Putnam actually has two appointments due to a vacancy. The second one is Wayne Moss and Angie Glasscock. Ray County is Bob Aikman, Todd Jackson, and Robert Johnson. Roan County, Ann Stewart and Tom Martin. Robertson, Mary Alice Jones and Thomas Groves. Rutherford is Delia Goodman, Charlotte P., Cindy Ayers. Scott is Esther Abbott and Denise Burge. Shelby, Gary Jamerson, Mike Leggett, Terry Longmire, Smith, Billy C. Clay, and Eddie Pascal, Stuart William Peacher, Donnie Burkhart Jr., Sullivan, Dwight King, Brian Stout, Tim Elsa, Trout, Trousdale, DeWitt, Woodmore, Dale Dees, Union is Cody Haynes and Jake McCullough, Van Buren, Larry Davis, Jason Guy, Gary Engel. Warren, Beth Blankenship, Nicholas Ramsey, Tyler Bell, Washington, Roy Gillis, Rigby Harvey, Ron Dawson, Wayne County, Rhonda Fisher, Charles Martin, Weekly, Gerald Parham, Mark Carroll, White County, Quinn Templeton, James Andrew Davis, and finally Wilson is Diane Major and Ruth Correll. And as was said before, we have not received appointments from Sumner and Tipton.
conservation districts as of yet. Okay, thanks a lot, John. You did a good job with all those names. Uh, if uh, does anybody have any questions or comments about those? You know, uh, what we want me to do is uh, do the motion to approve these from each county, and then include in that motion those counties that hadn't been sent in yet. A couple of them, maybe. Now, not every county will have an appointment each year. I think some of them do elections. So it's kind of on a, a rotating cycle. Are there questions or comments about about these names? So, John, are we ready to get a motion to approve them, you think? Yes, and in, in years past, it's up to the board what they do. And in and, and past years, a motion has been made to accept the uh, a, a name in the first position. That's generally uh, years past. That's what the motion has been, but the, it's up to the committee what they do uh, each year. It's completely in y'all's discretion what uh, the motion is. Right. Okay, y'all y'all heard John. So uh, I guess we'll, we'll open it up uh, for a motion to approve these new appointments, and include. And if you would like. You can include in that motion to to do those couple that hadn't been sent in yet. So I'll open it up to the board, the committee. Dwight King, I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, nominations and the one in the first order uh, would be the nomination and also the two that uh, did not have any uh, names or nominations that uh, we'll leave that up to the uh, John and his uh, office to uh, fulfill those at a later time. Okay, y'all heard the motion from Dwight. Is there a second? Uh, this is Susan Wharf, I second. Okay, thanks, Susan. Y'all heard the motion, it's been properly second, so uh, we'll go through and do the roll call late to, to make it official. And Pal Neal votes yes. Uh, Dwight King? Yes. Tommy Serber? Yes. Susan Ward? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Hatcher? Yes. Dr. Cross? Yes. Uh, Britton Dodson? Yes. And Ricky Esri? Yes. Okay, I think that's everybody that voted. And John, I think it's unanimous. Everybody would like to approve those appointments. So, all right, very good. And we then the, so noted. The next, the, the other, the other couple that come in, y'all can approve those when they come in. Okay, we'll do. Okay. We'll get that uh, okay. Uh, the next thing that I have on my agenda is a report from the partner agencies. Uh, and the first one I have is NRCS. So, uh, Shelton, are, are you on and you, would you like to share anything with us at this time? Yes, uh, Chairman Powell Neal, and good morning to you. Good morning. Good to have you on. Thank you for All being right. on. All right, you're welcome. As um, far as uh, just a quick, you know, uh, a brief update here is that we did receive our new um, USD workplace safety plan as um, far as from our from national headquarters. And this plan temporarily um, limits staffing to 50% of employees physically located in the USDA service center. So, um, you know, a couple of weeks back, it was at the 25% level, but uh, now they approved allows up to 50% of employees um, being in our service centers. So each office staffing um, may look different depending on the floor plan or the service centers, you know, based on that 50% capacity. Sometimes you have separation by walls with NRCS and FSA on, on, on in, the, in the service center, and you, you have both agencies all in the common area. So that's kind of how they look at that. But what the, what the department is looking at is safety is kind of serving a priority over reopening our offices. At one time, we were, we were able to allow visitors in offices, but right now we're not able to do so. Um, basically, um, you know, the mask policy has changed, which, you know, we're required to wear masks um, 
all times by employees, contractors, and partners, except when we're eating or drinking or if we're in a closed private office um, mm -hmm. with a door. So, so that's kind of where we're at. We did, um, Chairman Powell um, gave a, an update to all employees and partners, um, the acting state executive director of Farm Service Agency and myself kind of met with all employees to go over this new workplace um, policy. As um, far as just um, personnel update, we did select a, uh, a state resource conservation that replaced Matt Walker. Um, she will start on April 25th. Her name is Linda Ortiz Gonzalez. Um, she comes from us from West Virginia. She's a district conservationist there. Um, Linda has a degree in wildlife management, a master's degree in aquatic ecology and management um, from Michigan State University. She has 11 years um, with, within RCS and worked in Puerto Rico, Michigan, and West Virginia. As far as our staffing, I'll, I'll kind of go um, through our staff and kind of where we're at. We have made selections of our, our state GIS specialist um, in Nashville, our civil engineer technician in Knoxville, ag civil engineer in Murfreesboro, Nashville, and the state resource conservation in Nashville that I just mentioned, and also state executive assistant in Nashville. So we have some positions where we have a, a tentative job offers and final job offers. So we were able to select our equip program specialist that replaced Kelly German. We have a, we, uh, have a tender offer on an area resource soil scientist in Jackson. We did select a district conservation in Jackson. We selected a district conservation in Ripley, a district district conservation in Columbia, and then also an area engineer um, in Murfreesboro, and then also a district conservation in Woodbury, and a district conservation in Jasper. So you can see we have you know retirements, and we had uh, you know folks um, moving to other positions uh, across the country. So. Um, I just want to share that, and we have a number of positions that we're advertising for as replacement of Robert Anderson, our state conservation engineer, uh, public Air affairs specialist in Nashville to assist Catherine Burse, and also a uh, biologist in Murfreesboro, area resource conservation in Cookville, and also administrative support assistant in Cookville, and also a DC in Gainesboro. So that's kind of where we're at from a, from a staffing standpoint. We did have, we made selections for eight interns. Um, for FY21 and five recent grad positions. Um, and then also we have uh, seven current interns, um, five soil conservation, one engineer, and one geographic information system that will uh, come back in the summer. And then we'll convert a couple of uh, soil conservationists in Rogersville and also Livingston. Um, basically, we have uh, direct hires. This is one thing that we got approved by the department. So Tennessee, there's roughly uh, 1,525 positions nationwide. Tennessee got 25 of those positions. Right now, we had 17 in the first phase, and then we got um, eight in the second phase. So we have uh, made selections on 11 of those positions right now. And so we're hoping to get those folks going here soon. Um, basically, we have advertised some area engineer positions. We, were, we have been running kind of short on engineer positions, but also we're offering up incentives for these hard to fill positions up to 10,000. So uh, that's why we're excited to be able, and it, and it comes with contingent on a service agreement for up to four years. And so just wanted to share that. Um, uh, competitive funding agreements, right, basically we have 37 active agreements um, with uh, that support 60 field positions. Um, we will announce our FY21 competitive announcements as far as requests for proposals. And we're gonna be focusing on urban conservation um, we're going to be looking at uh, community gardens, pollinator habitat, and high tunnels. Um, and this grant is going to, the fund is going to be up to 150000 for 15 to 20 agreements for nonprofit, small businesses, college and universities, and also partners for one to three years. And the high tunnel is going to be 10000 Community gardens and pollinator is going to be up to 5000 Our next one will be local natural resource concern agreements. Um, and that's going to be focusing on our soil health, water quality, forestry practices. Funding for that is going to be 400000 um, for five to 10 agreements for one to five years. And um, this year, we're not able to, uh, we're not going to do research proposals, are not going to be, a, be accepted. Um, and the last one is going to be outreach agreements. It's going to focus on um, farm bill outreach to historically underserved communities. And this grant is going to be funding up to 100000 for four to 10 agreements for one to three years. So those should be coming out here around um, in March. And then the announcement will be open for 60 days, and the deadline is, ten, is really tentatively set for May 21st for these proposals. So I uh, just want to share that with you. As far as Farm Bill programs, um, right now we have um, almost issued about 3,000 payments to Tennessee producers for, for roughly around $22 million. 
Um, we definitely received our allocation for equip for FY21 for about 20, 26 million. We did send a request um, just yesterday for additional $10 million for our Valman Quality Incentive based on the applications and the interest we have in the program. Um, one new program that we're working on is our East uh, Tennessee Aquatic Habitat Joint Chiefs. That's a partnership with U.S. Forest Service that we received um, um, a total of 1.3 million, a little over 700,000 for NRCS, and a little over 600,000 for um, the Forest Service. So we'll be working through that project process. Um, one thing we did get our funding for our stewardship conservation stewardship program that helps build and, and strengthen your your operation, improving your operation, grazing conditions, crop yields. Um, we got 7.8 million, and we made an additional request to to ask for another 6.5 million. And the application deadline cutoff for our Conservation Stewardship Program Classic is March 26. Um, one thing I, I will say for our soils and compliance activity, we have completed about 145 highly rotable land determinations and also 112 wetland conservation determination requests as well. Um, one thing we've been working with uh, Britton Dotson on um, with the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation as far as conducting some permitting training to review and update the general permit, um, which a lot follows our string bank stabilization practice standards. So definitely good to have that dialogue with, with TDEC and NRCS regarding our approved designs and site descriptions and as uh, in, in built drawings. So uh, appreciate that effort with TDEC. And then one thing that we're doing is focusing on our conservation planning efforts with the uh, National Conservation Planning Partnership, reinvigorating our conservation efforts as far as uh, and our team have met twice and we're developing an action plan. We have several partners as far as with us, our Association of Conservation Districts, uh, the District Employees Association, um, Resource Conservation Development Councils. We have our district conservationists and other field staff that's taken a part as far as, you know, developing this action plan to how do we bring on and strengthen our conservation planning process in Tennessee. And so we're, we're in the process of submitting that action plan in April to our national headquarters office. As far as just some of the recent storms, we did have a couple of requests for the Emergency Watershed Protection Program to uh, relieving any imminent hazard to life and property caused by flood. So we got a couple of those requests. So we're working on some damage survey reports. And then also, um, finally, I just want to mention that Farmers.gov is, is, a, is a portal that uh, provides farmers and ranchers and landowners online self-service. They can apply for programs, process transactions, and manage accounts. And so that's that farmers.gov portal. So just want to share that. And then also our next state technical committee meeting is going to be Tuesday, May 11th. I know we have a special meeting tomorrow, but uh, there's if folks wanting to join that. Um, if you're interested, that information is on our website, um, www.tennessee.nrcs.usda.gov to learn more about that committee. So we're, we're definitely bringing on more folks in regards to our state technical committee. And really, um, it's, it's, it allows to, to advise NRCS on a variety of issues to provide information to me as I chair that committee to, to look at how we definitely can uh, provide that assistance to our producers and, and landowners here in Tennessee. So with that, Chairman Neal, that's, that concludes my report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hightower. We, it's good to hear from you. We appreciate all that you're doing for us. Well, and sounds like you got a lot going on and doing a great job. Are there questions for Mr. Hightower? Yeah, this is Susan Wharf. Uh, can you give me some clarification or just uh, direct me in the right, <clears throat> point me in the right direction as far as the office restrictions due to COVID? It sounded like, I mean, I'm aware of the 50%, but that if we have physical walls separating the employees, it sounds like there's another criteria there that can be applied. Can you help me with that? Okay. And could you, uh, you said physical loss there, Miss Susan? Yes, I'm talking about physical offices where we're separated. Oh, okay. It was, our, yeah. it was our understanding that it was the 50% rule period, which didn't make I didn't understand since we did oh, have okay. physical separation. So I'm trying to find the are there exceptions that say 50% unless you have them separated or what is that criteria? Okay. Yes. And so if we have some offices, um, for example, that we have a um, a wall, you have two entrances in a service center. You may have NRCS on one side and FSA on one side, and we're separated by a wall. And so what they allow us is that each agency can have 50% because you're separated by that wall. You're not in the same common area. You may share the same restroom 
um, conference room, but you mm-hmm. are separated because NRCS goes to one side of the building and FSA goes into the other. So you're separated by a wall or a door. Um, the other um, example is where you have, you're not separated and you all in the common area. So you have FSA and NRCS in a common area working in cubicles together. And so that will be 50% for just that common area. Okay, no matter in the common areas, if they're 10 feet apart, that's not a criteria. It's just 50% period. Yeah, it's 50% a period plus that um, we got to have that six feet of social distancing as well, too. Yeah, we're well beyond that, but we've had to send some county employees. We've struggled with that, which I didn't understand given the physical layout we had. So thank you. Yeah. All right, you're welcome. Seems like uh, maybe this some of the things will get better on some of that stuff. We hope. Mm-hmm. All right. Hope Thank you. Hey, uh, hey, Sheldon. Hey, this is Britton. Uh, hey, Britton. When does uh, Miss uh, Ortiz Gonzalez? When does she start? Britton, she's going to start on April 25th. April 25th. All right. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Okay, Mr. Hartow, we appreciate your report, and uh, we've got some others, so I'm going to move on if that's good. Yes, uh, sir. You're welcome. Do we have anybody from TACD on this morning, like Mr. Bledsoe or Matthew? Maybe not. Okay. Uh, from uh, TDEC, uh, Britton, have you got anything you'd like to share? Hey, Chairman Neal, thanks uh, for the opportunity. Uh, Not a whole lot, it's business as usual, uh, which this time of the year uh, has us over at the legislative plaza quite frequently. Uh, So trying to make sure that we've got appropriate people informed about uh, potential legislation, that sort of stuff. The majority of our staff continue to work from alternate workspaces uh, that's worked out fairly well for us. We do have administrative staff that uh, come to our offices uh, frequently, but the majority of the technical and permitting staff are still working largely from home. Uh, We're seeing an increase in building in rural areas. Uh, I don't know that that's surprising, but it's certainly an increase over uh, recent years past. And uh, I provide that as uh, is evidenced by the number of septic system permits that our staff are are processing. Uh, We've got a number of ongoing rule changes that we're pursuing. Uh, Most of those deal with wastewater management, some for animal feeding operations, which is an outgrowth of legislation that was adopted in 2017. So um that's all i have to share today be glad to ask you uh answer any questions if anything wants to uh, have a little bit more uh insight on what tdec has going on okay thank you mr dotson we appreciate you being on are there questions for mr dotson at this time <clears throat> okay uh we also uh have uh, dr cross uh ut institute of agriculture Dr. Cross, have you got anything? Are you still on? I am still on, and I've got just a couple items, but I'll be brief. Uh, Chairman Neal, uh, let, let the group know, first of all, we uh, have a new uh, individual serving as our Dean for UT Extension. Her name is Dr. Ashley Stokes. She joined us about a month ago, came to us uh, from Colorado State University, where she was a Deputy Director for Extension. Very experienced, uh, a great leader, and I think you'll have uh, a great, great opportunity when you get a chance to meet her and work with her in the future. We're uh, executing uh, uh, a land transfer from the Milan Army Arsenal Project out in Milan, Tennessee, uh, moving some property to the control of our Milan Ag Research Center there, which of course is where we do all our no-till work. And it's land that we have leased for the past 40 years uh, with the arsenal's future uh, somewhat questionable, we reached out to our federal delegation uh, congressman and, and asked for their support, and that got approved in the last defense bill. So really, really pleased about the fact that we'll have continued access to the acres there where we've done our no-till research for, for so many years. 
our enrollment's uh, holding steady. And in fact, at the University of Tennessee, we're up about 5%, and that's really counter to most of the trends across the country. So we're feeling good about that, and, and those trends hold for our College of Agriculture, too. So feel good about our, our upcoming class. This fall, our plan is that, you know, everyone who wants to be back in the classroom will be back in the classroom. We may still see some uh, offerings of courses online, but only because that it's felt like they were actually better online than they were face to face. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll be back in the classroom uh, and I'm not going to say it'll be back to normal, but it'll be uh, more like normal than than what we've been the past year, at least. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. And of course, we'll scale up our physical presence in in our offices and in our uh, laboratories as well. And then finally, uh, we've executed a partnership with the Tennessee Nature Conservancy at our Forest Resources Research and Education Center, uh, and that's uh, to become a Working Woodlands Program partner uh, with the Nature Conservancy. We got all our properties certified, uh, which is 8,000 plus acres. Uh, we got a detailed carbon credit inventory. We're actually in the process now of offering some of those carbon credits for sale. So we're really looking forward to uh, moving that partnership ahead. It's the first example of a working woodlands partnership with the Nature Conservancy in the United States. So we feel like we're blazing a trail here. We hope uh, that it proves to be uh, a very positive and very, very beneficial partnership. And, and to this point, it certainly has been. So uh, as we think about carbon credits and, and uh, uh, agriculture and forestry's role in in providing some carbon solutions. We hope this this is a good demonstration of one such. Uh, approach. So I'll just stop right there. Glad to an answer any questions. Really appreciate uh, the meeting this morning uh, and the chance to visit with this group. Uh, thank you, Dr. Cross. It's always good to hear from you. It sounds like uh, a lot of positive things going on, and uh, good to hear about Milan and the fact that you're going to. Look continue to be able to work there. I know that's that's great news. And, great. Um, uh, there are there questions for Dr. Close? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, what about from uh, TD, I mean, uh, TD, Tennessee Department of Ag, is there anyone that would like to share anything from there at this time? Chairman, Chairman Neal, this is John McClurk and I'll, I'll, uh, offer some brief remarks here. Uh, Commissioner Hatcher had a commitment at nine o'clock this morning due to the fact that it's National Agriculture Day and uh, tomorrow is Ag Day on the Hill. So there's a lot of uh, activity going on around Nashville today. <clears throat> um, I want to brief the committee. Uh, uh, Mr. Dodson talked about the uh, activity at the legislature. I, uh, we have also been busy there, several bills going through. But for this committee, the one of note is the the rewrite of the soil conservation district law uh, that was originally passed in 1939. That um, I'm happy to report that uh, that 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 statute revision uh, bill has has made it. I believe it was uh, it was on a consent calendar in the on the Senate floor last night, and it will be. Uh, and I believe that would passed, and it uh, is scheduled for a House floor vote this Thursday. So it's made it through all the committees. And so that uh, that revision is going to happen. So uh, this may be a, a, a historic meeting of this committee. This may be the final meeting of the state soil conservation committee, because after July 1st, uh, the name of this committee will be the Tennessee Soil and Water Conservation Commission. And so hopefully uh, in July or August, we can have a, 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 another meeting of this, uh, the first meeting of the, the newly named commission. You all will still be members of that commission. There's not going to be a, a complete uh, abolishment. It's just basically a name change. But I was looking in the records this morning, and uh, the earliest the earliest record of a state soil conservation committee meeting we have on record is March the 11th of 1943. So that was 78 years ago, and and so um, we're changing the name after 78 years. So and and I think the association was is very supportive of that. All the districts. Uh, all the states around Tennessee, except for one, uh, do refer to their uh, their state oversight board as as a soil and water conservation commission or committee or a board, and their districts are referred to as soil and water conservation districts, which is also a change in this new statute. So, uh, just reflective of the work that's going on to to uh, minimize soil erosion, control soil erosion, and to uh, 
improve our state water resources on uh, in in the agricultural world primarily, but not just there, not limited just to that. But uh, anyway, Mr. Chairman, that's the only uh, comment I have today. And uh, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to uh, happy to answer them. Okay, uh, thanks a lot, John. So it'll be uh, the Tennessee State Soil and Water Conservation Commission. Is that what you said? It'll just be the Tennessee Soil and Water Conservation Commission. Okay, Tennessee Soil and Water. Okay, sounds good. It lines us up. Are there the questions? Tennessee, yeah, it lines us up better with the Tennessee Forestry Commission and the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Commission. It just uh, all the natural resources groups will all be referred to as commissions now so that's good and uh and also like the president of PACD will be an ex official member is that correct that is right the president of which is Jim Bledsoe now Jim Bledsoe and that, yeah. that elect, whoever that elected president is in the future will be uh, an ex officio member of this of this body sounds good that's I know that's been in the works a long time and it's uh it's good that that's actually now coming to pass are there questions for John about this or any other thing at this time by the members of the committee? Well, I just want to say that, I, yeah. Will somebody have a question? Maybe not. Okay, I just want to say that I think it's good that, that we can work together with all these different uh, agencies. Like, uh, I think that's one of the strengths that we have here is that, like, with NRTS and uh, TACD and TDEC and uh, UT and department all working together, we're much better off here in the state. So I want to thank everybody for being on and, and doing that. And, and also, uh, we've kind of already talked about the statue update. So I guess if there's any uh, anybody has anything individually, I'll go through the list and they can share with us what's going on in their uh, their area of the state. Uh, I'll start with Dwight and East Tennessee. Dwight, if you got anything you'd like to share with us at this time. Well, the biggest thing is uh, it's been very wet this winter here in East Tennessee. And it, uh, uh, I've got a lot of ground that's tore up that's going to have to be fixed where the cattle uh, was coming in to, uh, you know, hay uh, rings and it's, uh, I've got several acres of ground that I'm just going to have to fix, and you know it. Um, uh, there's an old saying: you can tell how uh, many cows a farmer's got by the uh, height of his boots. And um, <laughs> this winter, you know, I was I was about to get the waders out. It, uh, you know, luckily I didn't have any cows that got trampled or stuck in the mud or anything like that. But it has been a struggle to. Um, and there again, I was spread, you know, hay out to where uh, I didn't have big, you know, deep messes, but still, it's uh, uh, still pretty muddy. We're starting to dry up. We've we've had a uh, whole two or three days, but it seems like we'll uh, get dried out a little bit, and then two days we'll have rain, and then two days it'll be sunny, and then two more days of rain. So it's been that pattern all winter. So it's been tough. Um, on the other hand, um, on the logging part of it, um, prices are good right now. Uh, we've had some increases on uh, different species, and uh, that, that's that's good. Um, you know, the sawmills, because it's been so wet. And um, another factor that we're, have, we're seeing is the... Uh, the uh, lack of loggers, lack of actual people that's in the business that uh, as the older loggers get and retire, there's not a whole lot of new people coming on. So that's a, a concern that, um, you know, as the industry we're looking at is, uh, you know, how are we going to uh, provide or have the logs uh, if you don't have loggers out there, you know, cutting and, and putting them to the mill. So I, I know that is a concern from, you know, the industry across the board. And uh, we're looking at maybe doing some training schools. I know our TFA is, is 
looking at trying to put together some kind of a school that uh, where you, uh, young people could get, come and get trained. I know that uh, Alabama's got a program like that, and it you know is supported by several of the mills and also machinery manufacturers and and uh, the machinery uh, salespeople that you know they're they're wanting uh, try to get loggers back in the business to where you know they can sell to so this is uh something that's uh you know it's the same way with the uh farmers you know as the farmers get older yeah. the older generation the young ones are not uh coming on to uh provide a workforce so you know i think it's a concern on an forestry so but uh you know things are looking better you know it's sunny outside today and you know, it's uh, dried up a little bit, so you know we're moving on. Thanks. Sounds good. Sounds good, Dwight. It's good to hear from you. So I guess you was on at seven thirty Eastern time this morning. That's that's good. Uh, yeah, there's a. I don't think we had as much uh, bad weather here in the winter as far as wet as we have I seen in some other years here in Middle Tennessee. But, but I know what you're talking about. But it's it's a big problem when you got a lot of cattle. So. But anyway, it's, uh, we're about done with that phase of it, and, and we're moving into some better times on the weather anyway. Uh, Tommy, uh, are you still on from uh, from West Tennessee, Tommy Server? Yeah, I'm still here, pal. Tommy, uh, how's everything have, going in your area? Well, we're we're just getting ready to gear up, start planting season, and and uh, hadn't got anything yet, but just just on the border, on a on a uh, we're right up to the line here, getting ready to get started. So uh, it right. is raining here a little day, so we're going to probably be slowed down a little bit again this week. But we'll be ready when it when it opens up. Uh, maybe things will uh, straighten out and we can get going and have a good year. Yeah. Sound like the prices are going to be pretty good on crops, but I know it's going to cost a lot more to get them out, it sounds like. So. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, it always it always <laughs> goes up. It follows them. That expense follows the right. price of the crop. So. Right. Here's no exception. Well, right. We appreciate you being on, Tommy. Good to hear from you. Yeah. And good uh, to be here. Yes, sir. And then uh, from Franklin County, Susan, have you got anything you'd like to share with us? Uh, mm-hmm. Just a similar situation. We've been mighty wet, and we're waiting for spring planting. Can't wait. <laughs> right. Right. Well, we appreciate you being on, Susan, and good to hear from you. Thank you. Uh, and also, uh, Ricky Esri uh, from, uh, I'm not sure what county, but what is it, Savannah area? Hardin. Are you still on? Hardin County, yeah, Savannah area. Hardin County. Yes, sir. Have you, how's things going in your area, Ricky? Well, it's similar, have been a little different than what they've been uh, saying there. We, we've been on... Uh, we had a dry, a drier winter than normal up to the last two weeks. Now we've had uh, pretty heavy rains the last two weeks, and we're getting heavy rain this morning. We've done had an inch this morning, uh, and they're giving right? us fat, well on, on the state line. They're giving two to four inches right south of us. Hmm. Uh, but we've uh, we've got real wet the last two weeks, and uh, I don't they I don't think he's been I had I don't know of no corn planting south of Interstate Forty. But now there's been some uh, north of Interstate 40, a little corn planted. But uh, uh, so we're looking forward to getting started. But it's gonna have to dry up. And the way the weatherman talks, we're we're gonna get rain another two inches uh, Thursday. So, and the Tennessee River yeah. is uh, hey, it's getting up pretty high again. Uh, it, it, it's out over a lot of the river bottom there in Savannah now. That's about oh, all okay. I got to report on. Well, we appreciate you being on this morning, and good to hear from you. And yeah, that rain's going to keep things slowed down for a little bit, but but I'm sure it'll it'll straighten out here pretty quick. All right. right. Um, so, is there anybody else on the committee that I hadn't asked for a report? I'm trying to make sure I didn't leave somebody off. Okay. Uh, I don't have anything else on the agenda today. John, is, is there anything else we need to discuss? No, sir. I don't believe so, Mr. Chairman. 
So we'll have another meeting in July, possibly, but but we'll we'll talk about that later, correct? Yes. Yes. So we'll be sending out notices well in advance of the next meeting. Okay. I uh, it's kind of good to do these meetings like this because we can do it from home and uh, we're not tied up for the whole day. But sometimes I think it'll be good to have one where we can get together and actually, you know, see each other. There's something to be said for that also, I think. So hopefully it'll work out where we can get together soon and have a meeting like that. Uh, I don't I don't have anything else. If there are other questions or comments, now would be a good time. If not, then I think we need a motion to adjourn, and I guess we'll do a roll call on that also. That is correct. So if you don't have any more uh, comments, uh, then somebody could please make a motion to adjourn. And we'll get a second Susan to do a Warf, roll call. I, Susan Wharf, I make a motion to adjourn. Okay, thanks, Susan. Is there a second? Tim Cross, second. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Cross. Uh, all those in favor of adjourning can vote now, and I'll vote yes. Pal Neal, Dwight King. Yes. Tommy Serber. Yes. Susan Wharf. Yes. Uh, Dr. Cross. Yes. Uh, Britton Dotson. Yes. And uh, Ricky Esri. Ricky Yes. Okay, thank y'all. I, I think the meeting will be adjourned now, and, and I appreciate everybody taking their time to be on this morning and and conducting the, the uh, business of the uh, last meeting of the Tennessee State Soil Conservation Committee. And thank thank you, everybody. you for your time, and everybody have a good day. And uh, if there's no nothing else, we will be adjourned, and we'll end this call at this time. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.